They just basically said, well, of course you have the right to freedom of speech, except when it comes to, let's say, political opinions. So, you know, then what right do you have at all? And, you know, it's terrible, Michaela, because I know perfectly well from talking to many physicians, physicians in particular, but also lawyers and psychologists, that no one in Canada, arguably, and this is also extremely strange, it's surreal, there's no one in Canada except me that's actually in a position to fight this because it's hyper expensive and I don't know if my insurance will cover it. It's hyper expensive. It's stressful. It's complex. It's time consuming. It could involve the uh, suspension of my license. Um, and there's not really anything that, that can be done to me that's a threat. I'm not serving as a clinician. I don't have a practice anymore because that became impossible, even though I love doing it. And I'm also not very happy about that. So I'm like the person who can do this. And Canadians have no idea to what degree professionals in Canada are now required not to say what they think or to lie outright. So for example, therapists are required by law to lie. And so for me, especially on the therapy side, if, if you're required by law and by your professional organization to lie cowardly, you're done as a therapist because the only thing you've got as a therapist is honesty. That's it. Honesty is what's curative. So, you know, it's just part of how surreal the world is and, and particularly how surreal Canada is. It's, uh, it's hard to fathom. Yeah. It's like, well, you have this fundamental right, but, well, but what? What rules? There's what? There's a rule, eh? There's a rule, is that right? That the College of Psychologists has that I can't criticize Justin Trudeau on Twitter. That's a rule, is it? And if someone anywhere in the world complains about the fact that I've criticized Justin Trudeau, let's say, that all of a sudden that's a rule, even though it wasn't a rule. And of course I get to criticize Justin Trudeau, not only because he richly deserves it in every way you can possibly imagine, but because that's actually what freedom of speech means. So I have no idea what the court means by, you know, abiding by the rules. So yeah. the rules are whatever the bloody College of Psychologists determines constitutes a rule after the fact, given their complete freedom to make manifest any rules they want. Yeah. It's, it's beyond comprehension. And yeah, yeah but, but I have freedom of speech. It's like, do I now? What do I get to talk about? Apparently I can't even talk about the weather you know, here's, here's another fact. This is literally the truth. People can co submit a complaint to the College of Psychologists from anywhere in the world. And so someone in the States submitted a complaint about the, conver the last conversation I had with Joe Rogan, where I yeah. expressed my doubts about the validity of economic predict predictions based on climate science. They, the complainant, submitted the entire transcript, right, yeah. a three-hour conversation, as evidence of my unprofessional behavior. And the college, which did not have to pursue that complaint, went forward with it. So, like, okay, I talked to Joe for three hours. Apparently, everything I said in that three hours was unprofessional and a disgrace to the to the profession. So like, well, what am I supposed to do about that? The answer is, well, we're gonna appeal the decision. I will take this to the Supreme Court. I don't think that any judges will have either the wisdom or the courage to rule about this properly, except at the Supreme Court level. And I'm not particularly optimistic about that either. I'm not optimistic about that either. I don't see how you can win this without overturning colleges in general. And I don't, like, that's not a good look for the colleges to lose this. So won't the Supreme Court, I know they're not supposed to be pressured, but won't they, what's the benefit for them for ruling in your favor? Other well, than withholding freedom of speech. Well, the benefit would be that they support, well, they would support the most fundamental principle of a free society, right? It's like, why do you have the right to freedom of speech? Well, the answer is, is because 
There's no difference between free speech and thinking, no difference between free speech and dialogue, and no difference between free speech and problem solving and negotiation. And so, and therefore peace. If you eliminate that, people can no longer think, they can no longer adapt, they can no longer negotiate, they no longer even know how to orient themselves in the world. And so, in principle, the advantage uh, for the Supreme Court is that they rule in favor of the most fundamental principle upon which civil democracy itself is predicated. Now, I don't think we have the right to free speech in Canada. I think this, this, uh, this decision today demonstrates that obviously. I saw the same thing with the Law Society in Canada. Partly was why I'm not surprised at this ruling. I've been through this before. And I see that Canada's walked down that idiot path for at least 30 years. So our country is in, well, this is where I start to get doubtful. It's like either I'm wrong or the country is in trouble. Now, to tell you the truth, I would rather be wrong, but I've thought it through. It's like, okay, what did I do exactly? None of my clients complained. That has nothing to do with this. And I expressed my political opinions, which I have a right to do, which I believe were correct. I think that, and Canadians agree with this now. The last poll indicated that Canadians believe that Justin Trudeau is the worst prime minister we've ever had. Well, that was sort of my point a year ago, you know? And so if I can't say that, and yet a majority of Canadians believe it to be true, and believe me, a lot more of them are gonna believe that. A lot more are gonna believe that in the relatively near future. In what sense do I have anything even approximating freedom of speech? And if yeah. I can't have that opinion, and therefore, in principle, no one can, then what do we do when we're stuck with a prime minister, let's say, who everyone has decided is the worst prime minister the country's ever had? You know, if you look at Bill C-16, it just kind of looks like, well, we're extending protection to another oppressed group, which isn't actually true because gender identity, by the way, you know, gender expression, that's not a group. I'd li just like to point that out because terminological accuracy actually matters. So we've extended legal protection to fashion, essentially, and you can say, well, maybe I'm, you know, being a bit intransigent about that, but I read the damn policies and I don't think I am. And that's not a group. So that's an indication of the muddle-headedness behind the legislation. And then the federal government, the Department of Justice, did say on their own website that they were going to interpret that law in light of the policies of the Ontario Human Rights Commission. And so, fine, man, go to the Ontario Human Rights Commission if they haven't taken the policies off yet and read what they're up to. And if that, if you agree with that, well, good, agree with it. But I would suspect that if you agree with it, you, don't, you didn't understand it or, or, or you're up to something. And that comes to the next part. What are, what are we really talking about here? Well, so we could be talking about my biases and my proclivity to scaremonger. And, you know, fair enough, but here's some reasons we're not. And one is that I have all those lectures online and, you know, believe me, if there would have been a phrase in any of them that indicated that there was something even vaguely morally corrupt about me, it would have been paraded around as evidence. You can be sure of that. So that's kind of a relief. You know, I did a lot of soul searching in the last couple of months and it's not like I'm without my problems, but anyways, so what is this about? Well, we'll say, hopefully, it's not about me, because that'd be stupid. And so what, what's going on? Why are all these people watching these videos, these things I made just to figure out what it was that I was thinking, you know, because I couldn't sleep one night, and because I'm not very damn happy about that unconscious bias stuff, which I would regard as absolutely reprehensible, that you could be held guilty for your implicit perceptions. Think about that. God, they use that test as a diagnostic test. You know, it doesn't meet the criteria for reliability and validity that you'd use for a diagnostic test. It doesn't produce the same results one time after another. And you can use it to target anybody. And so go along with it if you want and just see what happens. Anyways, so I've been thinking about this, like what's going on? Why the outcry? You know, you think, well, Professor Peterson got his 15 minutes of fame. It's like, 
Well, I had my 15 minutes of, you know, trivial fame several times in my life, and there's some good things about it, but I am, despite what you might think, a rather private person, and so it's not like I'm particularly enjoying it. But I thought something, you know, when I made those videos, I thought, this is something I learned from reading mythology. If you have to fight a dragon, you should go to its lair before it comes to your village. And so people think of what I did as courageous, and I don't think that's right. I just think that I can see danger coming, and you get to pick, you get to pick your anxiety. I could either be anxious about speaking, or I could be anxious about not speaking. And so I chose to be anxious about speaking. And that's not exactly courage. It's more like common sense. But that assumes that you're looking into the future. So you might say, well, what gives me any special power to look into the future? And hey, that's a good question. I mean, God only knows what's going to happen in the next few years. You know, I did read today, this is cool, 250,000 people will be lifted out of absolute poverty today. And 300,000 more will be connected to electricity. And we're knocking poverty rates around the world down faster by a huge margin than we ever have in human history. There was an article in the New York Times today called Why 2016 Was the Best Year Ever. It's really worth reading. I concluded the same thing. I worked for a UN committee a couple of years ago and I was looking at, you know, what was going to happen down the road and everything I kept reading was, well, wow, we're getting rid of polio, we're getting rid of elef elephantiasis, which you really don't want to have. We're getting rid of guinea worm, we're getting rid of polio. We're knocking malaria back into the swamps from where it comes. We're lifting people out of poverty. It's like Man, we're doing a lot of good things. You'd sure never guess that by the way we treat ourselves. So, anyways, so what's going on? Okay, so I thought, well, I better think about this. I've been thinking about it a long time. So, you know, the, the right wing is really hard on the Frankfurt School. You know, on the Frankfurt School were these kind of neo-Marxist guys who combined Marxism with Freudianism in the 1940s. And, and they weren't avowed neo-Marxists, no, so it's not like I'm making an accusation. And they were kind of anti-system type people and, and all of that. But I think to lay what's happening at the universities and in, broad, at, in the broader culture itself at the feet of the Frankfurt School is insufficient. Um, I really think that it's primarily a consequence of the French intellectuals who, and this is obviously an oversimplification, who emerged out of Marxism in the early 1970s and produce postmodernism. Now, the thing about the, the postmodernist types is they're nested inside Marxism. They, they say that straight out. I'm not inventing this. You read Derrida, who's like the, the joker at the, at the head of the postmodernist movement. And I, I mean joker because he's, he's, he's an intellectual clown. And that doesn't mean he's stupid, because he is not stupid. Not at all. These people are not stupid. They know exactly what they're doing. They know precisely what they're doing. They're a hell of a lot more educated about what they're doing than you are, unless you happen to be one of them. And they mean exactly what they say, just like people always do when they tell you what they're going to do, or they write it down. And they say straight out on their websites, say the women's studies websites, we think the patriarchy is an oppressive structure that should be broken down to its core. And they mean core conceptions. It's, it's not just social, it's linguistic, philosophical, and attitudinal. It should be broken down, wa wiped out, and restructured from the bottom up. And they mean that. 